Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Um, if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and do so. If you like this video at the end, please go ahead and click the like button. If you want to be notified of new videos when I post them, please hit the bell. I don't know if I have a bell yet though because I don't know if I have enough subscribers. So please subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe. Um, this is something that I want to be doing now since we have the time and I have wanted to do a new video. I wanted to put out a lot of videos, um, but in the last two years, you know, uh, life happened. Um, I didn't have an editor. I still don't have an editor. So basically, you're going to start seeing these videos be pretty, um, you know, maybe unfinished. Um, but whenever I get to getting an editor or figuring out how to edit, um, we'll clean them up a little bit for you. In the meantime, um, today's topic is going to be on uh, why I buy genuine leather handbags. Okay, so I am from Florida, uh, but I live in Jamaica. Um, I'm sure in my introduction you know that. But here in Jamaica, I, um, well, I love to use handbags. Handbags is my favorite thing. But um, here in Jamaica as well, I sell handbags because I'm that passionate about it that I think that everybody should have a really nice bag at some point in your life. So because I really, really, really believe that, um, and I know that, you know, Getting really nice ones are limited on the market. I know that I have a good eye to be able to buy them. So I buy them and I sell them under my brand called The Gift Genie. And that's just a brand that finds really unique gifts, nice gifts, luxurious gifts, things that you wouldn't see normally. I tend to have and uh, I have a good, nice little following and clientele that supports that whole venture. Now, um... The number one question that I get asked, though, when people see my handbags, is, uh, uh, do you only do leather? I don't only do leather. I do leather or fabric. What I do not do is vegan leather, pleather, synthetic leather, faux leather, any of those that are not leather. And the reason why I don't do it is because there have been styles that have grabbed me in the past that I'm absolutely in love with or that I've been absolutely in love with because most of them are gone now and I'll get to that in a minute. So I fall in love with this vegan leather bag. First of all, vegan, what is vegan leather? There is no vegan that can make leather, right? No vegetable can make leather, no, no plant. Vegan is a plant-based diet. It's not a plant-based bag. So anyway, there's this vegan leather thing. That's all marketing. All marketing. It's not real, right? It's the same pleather or synthetic leather or fake leather, any of the names you want to give it. It's not real. But before that, they said pleather and synthetic leather and stuff like that. So you were able to know. You'd know if it was PVC or this or that. You'd know. Now they come out with this vegan leather and like everybody's on that vegan bad wagon. And of course, it sucks me in too. I'm like, oh my God. Because haven't you eaten good vegan food? Like that, that fools you? Like the vegan bacon tastes like bacon. So I'm like, okay. Let me get this vegan leather. Well... Two bags have fooled me. One I got in Barney's and this one that I ordered that I still have. Okay, so the one in Barney's completely disintegrated here in Jamaica. That's why I don't buy them, by the way. Because they fall apart. They either uh, turn to dust or they peel or they strip or they, uh, they just disintegrate. There are shoes, there are shoes, shoes do the same thing by the way, that material in general because it's hot here. We don't have climate controlled houses, so we don't have central AC, right? We have room ACs um, in the houses. So 
the temperature is never all the same temperature. So what happens is they like they get too hot and maybe too cold or maybe too moist. I really don't know what happens. But I know that when you go back after not having worn it for a while, it's just falling apart. There's nothing you can do about it at that point. And the shoes, the shoes is interesting because if the shoes is all like not leather, then the whole thing will peel and strip. But then some shoe makers, they will have like leather on the outside or raffia on the outside, whatever material on the outside that can withstand all of this. But then, like, the sole on the inside will be, like, this fake leather. And then all of the inside starts to, like, you go back to it and it's all, like, stripped and powdery and everything. You can't wear it anyway because what are you going to do? Put your foot in there and then when your foot goes in it and, like, sweats or anything like that, all the stuff is all over your foot. No. So, anyway, I wanted to show you what I mean. Because I don't want anybody to think that I'm crazy. So this is the, although I'm a little crazy, so it's okay if you think so. But not about this decision, right? Okay, so, and here's the thing. Because I sell the bags, I, I can't have them disintegrate on somebody after the fact. Because, I mean, I'm, it's my brand. So I won't sell them something that I know might strip. Now... If it does, if, if there's some other item that does have some, you know, flaw from storage or use or, or down the line. If I know that that will happen, I would disclose. But if I don't know, obviously there's nothing I can do. But because I know this about leathers and I know that it's the worst thing for you to love an item and then it fall apart, I just wouldn't do that to somebody. For me now, I hate that because I actually collect the handbags. So I'm going to want it to be good like in three years, four years down the line. I want it. I'm going to go back for it to wear it to something. So I can't have it disintegrate either. Like case in point, this bag, I love this bag. First of all, let me show you this bag. So what I love about this bag is that it has these pleats and they're so unexpected and they come up over the top of the bag, right? And then I love the secure opening of this bag. There is no zip. There is no snap. It's like one of these frame things. So it's kind of like so cool. So I really love this bag. Love. I've never worn the bag. Never once. I bought it a few years ago. And it's called, it's by Danielle Nicole, New York. She's a New York designer. It has a zipper inside, right, for a little patch pocket. It has, it's open and ready, like, you know, you can just throw stuff in. It's a nice bag. And, of course, I went back for it recently to actually wear it. And I need you to take a look. I don't know how close I can get, but if you see, can you see the, the peeling? All that is not part of the bag, guys. That is the actual peeling of the bag. And it's in the corners as well. In the top there. Along all these edges. Right? And this has only, even on the bottom, and this bag has only been stored. It's never been worn. It was in with all my other handbags, my clutches. I have a whole drawer that I just put the clutches in. And this was in there. And there was no problem except it has peeled. So, I mean, what am I going to do with the bag now? What do I do with it? What do I do? I can't do anything. I can't wear it because it'll be getting the peeling all over me or my outfit. And even if it's not, it just looks strange. So now, if anybody compliments my bag, once they look closely, they'll see that like it's falling apart. And it was a pretty penny as well. 
So that's why I don't buy fake leather, vegan leather, synthetic leather, pleather. I don't buy any of those. Now, fabric bags are great because they don't disintegrate. They're just like clothing. So they're a good option. So fabric or leather, that's it, especially for this climate. So if you have any questions or if you agree, please leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And thank you for joining me today. And as always, be true to you. Thanks.